In a recent video, I took a look at an automatic grease dispensing unit. And this was really clever because you basically set this to the desired number of months from 1 to 12 that you want this cartridge to last. And it will then gradually squeeze the grease out over that time using electrically generated gas. It was very interesting. And somebody mentioned there are air fresheners that do that too. And I thought, really? And I went online and looked and found that Rubbermaid sells the T-cell T -cell air freshener and it seems to use the same little cell. I also discovered that Varta makes a gas producing cell that is specifically for the task, but I'm still suspicious that they may actually be the zinc air hearing aid batteries, but I can't quite prove that yet. Experiments are currently in progress. So this device has basically a button cell with its negative exposed and its positive connected to this outer shell here. And when you sit it into the dispenser, but you squeeze the side to open it. It comes with a pack of screws and a little alcohol wipe for cleaning it before sticking it onto the wall with double-sided tape, the curse of restrooms. Uh, and inside is the uh, a little spring in the middle that makes contact with the centre contact, negative, and then two outer connections that make contact with the positive. And they go onto a circuit board, and if I bring in a meter... Oh, first thing I'll show you is that there is voltage across this little cell here. So if I put the negative and negative positive and the positive, it says uh, 1.4 volts, which is about the, the voltage of a, a zinc air cell. This is a unused, well, it's still got its seal on. Theoretically, the science behind these is that these are zinc air cells that require oxygen to actually operate, which is why they have a little tab in the back. As soon as you peel that off, it exposes some air holes and the chemistry starts happening. But if you leave that tab on, apparently, uh, and then pass current, uh, the voltage will drop quite a bit, but then it'll start producing hydrogen because it's being starved of the oxygen it needs the full thing. But I measure in this one about 1.235. If I was to take the label off that, it'd go up. You want to see that, don't you? 1.235. Take the label off to let the air in. Don't know how long it'll take. There's just a few. There's five holes in the back of that. Has a voltage. 1.235. 1.34. 1.35. It's shooting up now that it's got oxygen. And if I was to starve it of oxygen again by putting the label on again, theoretically it would just use up that oxygen and then it would revert back into its dormant state. But that may take a while. And it probably need loaded to do so. Anyway, I've got distracted away from it. I think it is using technology based on zinc air cells. Now, the resistance in here. Let's put this to the 20k setting. And we'll put it across these two contacts. Because all it does is it puts a resistor across here. And the value of the resistor determines how much current flows. And therefore the speed at which the gas is produced. So I put the meter on here. And with one the position... The switch is in the, uh, what is it marked? Normal and light. So normal is going to be the lowest resistance probably. It's 1.2K. And the light will uh, increase the resistance to a level that uh, it releases the gas slower. 2K. Theoretically, you could uh, modify that. You could actually theoretically... Put in your own resistor and make this release the smell over a longer period of time. But I'm not sure how stable that would be. Let's pop the circuit board out. Is it just a couple of resistors? Hold on, I'll bring it up. I shall focus on that. I shall zoom up. Oh, still not really in focus, is it? No, it's not going to focus. Hold on, focus on that. No, that's as good as you're going to get. Two resistors. That's all there is in it. Let's focus back down here because this is where it's all going to be happening anyway. Rightio. So now let's take a look at the cartridge here. So it has an insert that there's a wicking material in here that is going to absorb the liquid and then gradually let it evaporate. And there's also a, a wicking ring around here. And you can also see some liquid in here, which is odd because there must be a second reservoir because... Uh, when you put this in, it apparently punctures that from what I can see. And once it's punctured, it may lock or it may not lock. There's one way to find out. 
Um, but surely the liquid, will, it's, maybe it's just to prime the wick. Or is there a, is it possibly escaping in some other way? I'm not really sure. Or is it just pushed out a reservoir? And how is it that it can mount up this way and work? And this way or this way, it can work in all orientations without the liquid just seeping out or the gas escaping. I'm not really sure. Uh, there's only one way to find out and that's to open it, which is what we're going to do. But let's try it out first. There's going to be stinky schmoo everywhere anyway, so I might as well try it out first. So the instructions of this say, put this back in, that you place this in and you press it down while you rotate it. Oh, I can hear it bubbling. Uh, it didn't rotate. Is it supposed to rotate more than that? It's definitely burst the seal. Uh, I don't think that actually went to plan. Nope, that didn't go to plan. That did not go to plan. That is not... Whoops, there it is. It's rotated. Oh, that is stiff. It is presumably cutting into the material. And now I'm guessing, well, how would it wick out if it's pointing up the way in a table? It, that must be what that outer wick is for. But anyway, I'm going to leave this for a while to let it soak out, and then we'll take a look at it. Uh, so one moment while I let it do that. Okay, the gloves are on, and that means things are going to get serious. Let's open up. Can I just say that Rubbermaid just for some reason makes me think of those uh, rubber made outfits that they sell on eBay for kinky people. That's what comes to mind. The smell is coming out of this now. I've actually had it open and closed again. Well, not fully open, not. I'm saving that for right now. But I've taken a look inside the uh, cartridge itself here and found that the the oil is wicking out, but the little plastic inserts here that were supposed to be cut through by these spikes, it didn't quite manage it. They're kind of there, but they're not really, they've just kind of stretched and not actually torn. Maybe that was quite, it was so quite hard to turn. But anyway, the little wick on the outside is uh, mopping up some of the schmoo. Some of it has gone onto that. Not a lot has escaped so far. Let's open it up and let, let it all escape, basically. That's why I've got the gloves on. Chemicals. So is this going to come off or is this sealed on? Is it using a diaphragm to squirt this stuff out or something else? Oh, this is going to be very destructive, but that's okay. You guys like it when it gets destructive. Uh, let's zoom down a bit so we can actually see the destruction in greater detail. So let's pop that open as well. If this doesn't go to plan, it's, it doesn't feel like it's going to plan. It feels like it's crumbling into millions of pieces. Uh, then I shall pause momentarily while I try and get it open and then show you what I find inside. Loud scrunching noises. The microphone loves loud scrunching noise. It tends to make that loud clack noise as its automatic gain tries to uh, compensate for my violence. Okay. So it's getting there. It's not really getting there. This is going to turn into one of these long videos. You are welcome to skip forward to the to the action bit. I'll probably find there was some screw in the back that just let this liberate completely, but I do think it's glued in to keep all the schmoo inside. It does seem like it is potentially glued. I shall keep prying at it. Some people say you should have skipped over that bit, and others say, no, leave it in. By letting you do the skipping, that makes it easier. This is glued on. Okay, what if I do this? Is this going to liberate it better? No, this is making a huge mess. Wow, this is such a messy thing. This is the point I should probably pour the liquid out of it because otherwise it's going to end up an absolute apocalypse. And keep in mind, this is a month's supply of chemical aroma in here. So uh, this is probably a bad idea. I shall pour it into the wicking material. It's probably too much, the wicking material. Oh, no, it's not even coming out. Okay. I should be trying to keep this as intact as possible, he said, bursting it even more, to uh, try and find out uh, how it works. Oh, this is really well sealed on. Let's take a look at the other side. This is all going to drain out now, isn't it? The liquid must be in here. Is there some diaphragm system? Excuse me, I'm just going to take a wee peek in. There's definitely liquid. 
Well, there may be a diaphragm system in there, but there is that thing, right? Uh, to the, mm. Or is the liquid in the secondary chamber behind that? And is it being pushed out uh, in the middle? I think it might be. Hold on, let's get a bigger screwdriver. Let's get something more destructive involved. Ugh. This is better. Right, okay, what do we have? There's all the liquid. So how, if it's vertically, how does it push? Unless there's a diaphragm at the back of that, but there's all the liquid. There's a little sort of valve thing that is kind of like sits over that and over that and kind of releases it in a controlled manner. It's about to release it in a non-controlled manner. Just one moment, please. I'm going to get something to pour this very stinky liquid into. I'll be back in a jiff. Yeah, that's messy. I've got it out. It's actually spilled everywhere. I'm just going to rinse this out, whatever it is. I'm not sure if it's oil or it's uh, or it's something else. But uh, I'm going to rinse it out so that I can take it apart with my fingers and not uh, get this chemical all over my hands. One moment, please. You know it's getting a serious tear down when it's not just the gloves, but the Dremel comes out as well. This is well sealed together. Let's prise this apart. I'll zoom back down again so we can share the magic together. So this comes off, oh, and there's a diaphragm. So they've got a diaphragm, and behind this diaphragm, I'm expecting to see that cell. Right, okay, so where's a knife? Let's go through the diaphragm. Oh, quite a stiff diaphragm. I wonder what the pressure releases for this, when the it's finished, uh, all the liquid and it's pushed this diaphragm hard against the surface. Does it pierce it and let out the pressure? There is the back of the battery and it's got the wee plus symbol on it. That is it. So the battery is venting the gas into here. It's filling the diaphragm up. That's pushing the liquid. It's got a little right tail. I'm just going to draw this down so you can see a side view of the mechanism. One moment, please. Job done. Let's explore. So I shall zoom down onto this so we can explore it in detail. The unit has two chambers and a diaphragm in between them. And it's curved so that initially that diaphragm will start curved back the way. And it's full of liquid. And over time that the pressure will build up on this side generated by this gas cell will push that forward. It isn't easy to get out though because there's a little plug in there just to stop all the liquid draining out. And it is held in place by this front cap, which has a little dimple on it, there, holding that little cap in place. And uh, that uh, means that it needs a bit of pressure to actually push out and squish past that. When it does, it goes into this other reservoir area, which is perforated when you actually push it into the container. And that allows the liquid to dribble out onto the wicking material. To generate the gas in this side, there's a little support here with an O-ring in it. Let me actually show you this. And the gas cell goes into the O-ring. Where is the gas cell? There's the gas cell. Oop, I've just stuck it to a bit of tape temporarily. Uh, so here's the gas cell. Here's the O-ring. Here's the back of this area that had the sticker on it. I've taken the sticker off to reveal that it's got sort of reinforcing ribs for the pressure. I wonder what happens when it gets up to maximum pressure. There's a possibility that the diaphragm might get pushed against these fairly sharp bits of plastic and it might perforate it and let the gas out. I'm not really sure. But when they're assembling it, they put this O-ring in here and then they get the cell and with the positive down, the negative up, they push it into that and it sits down into the O-ring like that. Then they put this crimp on it over the top and it does two things. It makes a connection with the side of the cell for the positive connection and exposes the uh, center bit for the negative connection. And that's shown here. There's the O-ring, there's the cell going in, there's the metal cover that covers it. And then when you put it into the actual aroma dispensing unit, there's a spring in the middle that makes contact with the, well here it is, with the uh, negative and then these two outer bits make contact the positive and it's just a resistor across them. So it's the actual action of the cell discharging but being starved of oxygen, because uh, if it is a lithium, oh, a lithium, a zinc air cell, then it needs that air for the proper chemical reaction. If you discharge it without that, 
um, it generates hydrogen in this capsule. Not a lot of hydrogen, just enough to squish the liquid out. It could also be an actual Varta uh, gas generating cell. Don't know. They might just be bluffing or have they done special chemistry? I have tests in progress. Not that I'm going to be able to test this in any way. It would have been quite good uh, actually just getting one of these, popping the back off, putting another cell in, closing it up and then trying it out. But that's not going to happen now because I've taken it to bits. But there we go. That is it. That's how that aroma unit works. The house is now stinking of marine freshness or their chemical interpretation of it. But interesting. That also explains why it can work up that way, that way, or that way, because ultimately the diaphragm can be pushed out in any direction. It's going to squeeze every last drop of that liquid out over time as the gas fills it up. So very clever, very interesting device indeed. Quite neat that it just, over that period of time that you've set with just that resistor at the back, with the switchable resistors, that you can choose how long it takes to continually and evenly dispense that liquid out over a long period of time into this wicking material and then into the air. Very clever, very neat indeed. Looking forward to seeing the other version of it, which I've ordered, which is much bigger. So uh, I shall hopefully make a video about that when that arrives. In the meantime, that is it. Quite an interesting thing.